Okay, I'm just gonna cut to a montage of me screwing up. Oh, I really don't know what to say! Three, two, one. I have to do the awkward introduction thing too. Yay, go for it. This is my friend Jules. Hello. Um, and I'm gonna bombard her with a series of questions about her life. Um, and it's sounding a bit intense. It's, it's like a <laughs> this is your life slash interrogation, so it should be fun. Hi, I'm Jules. I am a PhD student coming towards the end of that process. I make videos about the PhD process and everything that comes along with that, as well as various other things. My channel is full of all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff. One of the first things that made me think, oh, I need to get Jules on my channel, was that you did a physics undergraduate degree. I did. And I am doing a physics undergraduate degree. So my first question is, why did you decide to do physics? Well, when I started doing my UCAS application at the beginning, I was intending to apply for geography. Oh. And I changed my mind before I submitted it, um, because I felt I wasn't smart enough to do physics. Okay. And my sister was at university already, and she had a friend who was doing maths, and she said that this guy wasn't that smart and he was able to do maths. You don't need to be that intelligent to do uh, more hardcore, I guess, how people see it. Like, you know, the traditional academic subjects. Yeah. It's like, you don't need to be a super genius if you want to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. So that was why I swapped and then did that. That's interesting. I went to Swansea University. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't my first choice. Mm -hmm. My first choice was Imperial College. Really? And I didn't even get offered to do it there because my predicted grades were not high enough. I was not predicted three A's, therefore I did not get offered. However, they did offer me geophysics. Um, so I got offered that without even applying for it. So that was interesting. And I ended up putting that as my first choice, but then I still needed three A's to get that, and I didn't get three A's. I got an A and two B's. Something you mentioned about not you don't have to be a genius. N most people who do physics or maths or anything like that are not geniuses. No, definitely not. It's a myth. Normal people. <laughs> they are normal people. I, I think that popular culture just likes to make... Because like, even when you're watching like kids or teenage TV shows, mm -hmm. there will always be complaining about maths, maths is really hard, the nerd is doing well at maths. Yeah. And I think that reinforces the idea that these subjects are really difficult and you either are good at it or you're not. Mm -hmm. When I think there's a much broader spectrum. You said that you thought you weren't good enough to do physics and that's exactly what I thought yeah. when I was younger. But it's just an, it's a myth. Yeah. It's a complete myth. You, it is hard, but hard doesn't mean you can't do it. Yeah, exactly. So, so with all of the geography sprinklings throughout mm -hmm. that story, tell us how you ended up doing a PhD in the geography department. <laughs> yes, uh, people find it a strange jump, whereas I know a fair few, like quite a few of my lecturers at my, on my masters had done the same thing. So I think it is more normal than people realize, especially in physical geography, because mm -hmm. geography is a weird subject because half of it is very much in the humanities and half is very much in the sciences. And like, so I did my masters still at Swansea University mm -hmm. and in there that, the geography department was in the College of Science, but then here in Nottingham, where mm -hmm. I've done my PhD, it's in the social sciences uh, uh, department instead. Mm -hmm. So With it the kind economists. of yeah, it's a weird pairing <laughs> for being in the same building. I'm confused by that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I during my physics degree, I did well. I got a first. I was one of two people in my year to get a first, but I didn't really enjoy two it. Two people. Mm. That's incredible. Yep. So, yeah, and I had like. I, I, I kind of refer to it as a pity first, but it's not, like I earned it, but I didn't have a total average grade of over 70%, it was like 69, nice. and when you're borderline like that, they, mm -hmm. it goes to like a committee and they look at your grades and stuff, and I got an 80 something for my dissertation, mm -hmm. I think that's what they, yeah. yeah, but um, so yeah, so the other guy actually got an average of over 70, so it's just like, oh, Ryan. No, uh, <laughs> you've got a first. I mean, that's, yeah. that's how maths works. Right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I finished that, and my intention was I was done with education. I was finished. I was sick of it. I was going to join the real world and get a job. Started applying for jobs that summer. Um, so, and then I got an email from the university saying, because you're an alumni, mm -hmm. we have all these courses that are available for master's degrees that still have places on them. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, we know what your grades are. So if you have the right grades and appropriate subject, you can just do it. And some of them had funding because of this scheme that was running called Access to Masters, which yep. was between the Welsh government and the European Social Fund. Mm -hmm. And it paid for your tuition for the masters and also gave you um, a small amount of maintenance, about 400 pounds a month. Okay. 
So I was like, well, if I can do a fully funded year of another degree, that's something to do. Um, so yeah, so self-taught how to code and then made some apps that um, gave you root instructions and then ran an experiment with people um, going along those and getting feedback on it. And while I was doing that, my contact at the Ordnance Survey told me that there was a PhD that was on a similar kind of subject. And if I was interested in this sort of thing, I should apply for it. Initially, I thought, nah, I'm not doing any more education. I said this last year, I mean it this time. Not doing it. <laughs> Famous last words. Yes. Mm. So uh, a few days before the deadline for that, I thought I might as well just go for it and see what happens. Thinking I wouldn't get it. But I got offered an interview. So I came up to Nottingham, did my interview. And I was wandering around campus a little bit because it was on the main campus, which is a very nice green place. So I was just having a, little, having a little wander around, explore. So I was just wandering around enjoying that and then thought, oh, I haven't turned my phone back on uh, after going into this interview. Switched my phone on. I had three texts and two missed calls. Um, How many minutes after? Was this it? was maybe 15, 20 minutes. Wow. And then as soon as I turned my phone on, I then received another call and it was from uh, my supervisor saying... <laughs> But yeah, they want to offer it to me if I want to do it. That's incredible. To which I kind of froze because I wasn't expecting to be (laughs) chosen to do it at all. I thought I was just getting some interview practice, basically. Being a scientist slash social scientist? Yes. Uh, What obstacles have you faced? Um, And you talked about physics being, thinking it was too difficult for you to do. Um, What obstacles have you faced along the way in terms of potentially being a woman in a less representative Mm. subject area, if at all? I wouldn't say I had any obstructions or problems at any point. I think, especially when going for an undergrad, it kind of works to your advantage because they they want more women Mm -hmm. in these sorts of things and they encourage it quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think if you show any interest, they will jump on that and encourage you. Mm But then equally that can be a bit of a double-edged sword if you then feel like you're having to do something you weren't necessarily wanting to do. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I, I did a very science based A-levels because I did um, physics, maths and geography and AS I did biology and then I dropped that. Mm-hmm. I didn't intend to do biology, I wanted to do something a bit different because my school also offered psychology, sociology and a few things like that. But the way it worked out with how you could choose classes, we had four columns and you had to pick one in each. Mm-hmm. And because physics was only in one, it then meant that to do the three I really wanted, I was left with one column with nothing in it I wanted to do. With hindsight, I kind of wish I'd done something more in the arts, because I did art at GCSE, Mm -hmm. but I had the joy of art crushed out of me by my art teacher by that point. No way! Because I've seen some of your artwork. Check out Jules' channel. Uh, (laughs) It's really awesome. Oh, thank you. I think that's the thing. Now that I'm doing it, I've had many years. This was like ten years ago that Mm -hmm. I stopped doing art at school and now I can enjoy it again but it genuinely took until two years ago for me to feel like I wanted to do art because she just just made it not fun and you you also touched on when we spoke earlier (laughs) about potentially it could be detrimental if there's too much focus on pushing girls into STEM um, because you don't want to force them to do things. Yes. They're not really that interested in Yes, Yeah, I do feel I went into physics because I felt an obligation, because mm-hmm. I was good at it, and they wanted to try and get more girls to do science. So I felt like I had to do a science. That mm-hmm. was something that was expected of me. And I don't think it's necessarily like a bad thing that I was pushed that way, mm-hmm. but I do feel like I had my choices taken away a little bit. Because mm-hmm. when I was in... When I was about... 15, 16, I intended to go into art. I wanted to be an illustrator. I wanted to make children's books and things like that. That was what I wanted to do. Yeah. But I kind of was convinced by, you know, teachers, parents, you know, very well-meaning and not bad advice, but that that wasn't a, you know, a more stable career. And what you should do is do something sciencey and intellectual and then change afterwards, which is kind of what I have done, really, because I want to now go into video editing. Yeah. So... You got there eventually. Yes, (laughs) bit of a roundabout route. (laughs) What advice would you give to your younger self? Let's say A level, age jewels, if you could go back in time. I would say, even if you don't want to do art properly, don't stop drawing because you're going to be annoyed in ten years when your abilities are the same as when you were like (laughs) sixteen. So much lost time. Just keep drawing. Just keep doodling. That's fine. Um, And also try things. I think that's something I have not done enough. I 
did not take advantage of all the societies and things at university and try new different experiences when it's easy to do that. Try things. Push yourself. And I don't care what people think so much as well. Because yeah. I considered making YouTube videos a long time ago. Really? I mean, I've had a, my YouTube account, like my channel was made in 2006. Yeah. It was made, I uploaded three videos that were what you would stick on stick on Facebook now. It yeah. was a video of me and my friends breathing in helium from a balloon. <laughs> and um, two videos of me and my dad going in his truck off-roading. Nice. They weren't particularly interesting, they were yeah. just a few little clips I'd recorded. But, and I'm really annoyed when I started making videos, I didn't make them private, I deleted them. And I don't have a copy of them. So no! those only exist in my memories now, which is really sad. I've um, got one of like rescuing the cat from a roof. Yeah, <laughs> but that's private, so I've still got it there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a regret. Don't don't delete your videos. That's uh. also, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't try and start making proper videos until a few years ago because I didn't have the confidence. I was a yeah. very self conscious teenager in early twenties, and I would not have put myself out there. So I think encouraging myself to do that a bit more. I should probably promote your channel now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we made a video on Jaws's channel. Um, about half an hour ago. Um, mm -hmm. So if you want to find out what that was all about, then you should go and check out Jules's channel and you should subscribe because it's awesome. Mm, thank um, you. There are lots of videos that are kind of similar to mine, sort of about academic life and PhD, but then there are also video game reviews, yeah. um, drawing art, yeah, stuff. Yeah, art stuff um, and stuff about having no sense of smell because that's a weird fact about me. And uh, it's really interesting. <laughs> so if you want to learn about anosmia, my channel because no one else is talking about it so <laughs> niche right here yeah <laughs> anyway that is all so i'm gonna say goodbye now okay. bye, bye. <laughs>